Alright, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up Reactor from a builder's perspective. There's a lot of separate options we need to have turned on uh, in order to have our building process be as optimal as and efficient as possible. And the first thing we're going to want to do, the most important of all, is to turn on edit mode, which is this button right here. Uh, uh, optionally, you can use the F1 key to turn it on or off. And edit mode is very important. Without it, we can't do much of anything in Reactor. It gives us access to a bunch of new options over here, um, some new navigational capacities here, and without it, we just we can't build, we can't add new modules, we can't do much of anything. So it's pretty much the most important thing. Uh, if you ever find yourself using Reactor and all of a sudden all your options go away, it's possible that you accidentally turned edit mode off or hit the F F1 key somehow. So let's just something to keep in mind. The next option to turn on is the Show Info Hints option, which you can find over here on the right side of the screen. And what that does is give you extra information about modules when you're working in the structure view, and it also allows you to hover over any panel elements, such as a knob, um, to get a little additional information about what it is that it does. It's also useful to have debug mode turned on when you're building. Um, I'll show you a little bit more about this later, but for now, just know that you can turn it on right over in the left-hand panel here, right there. And it'll just give you a little bit more information when you're building about what's happening inside um, the structure. Another option that I find very useful is the show side panel option right here. And you can use this to access several different parts of Reactor. Um, there is a file loader on the left-hand side here that you can use to load player ensembles, um, the factory ensembles right here, your own ensembles in the user column, and then uh, there's also a way to load WAV files, which I'll show you a little bit more about later on, but that's right here. Uh, the side panel also features a snapshot screen, which you can use to create, delete, and rearrange snapshots and snapshot banks. Uh, it also has a MIDI and OSC page, which you can use to connect your MIDI devices to various panel options. And it also has a panel set page. Uh, I'll show you a little bit more about panel sets later on. And it also gives you a bunch of options for any different module or macro that you happen to be working with. So the side panel is a very useful and important part of building in Reactor. I suggest that you keep it on at all times. Okay, now let's check out the audio and MIDI settings, which you can find in the file menu here and open up and generally speaking you want to use an ASIO um, driver for your audio card with Reactor and uh, over here in the MIDI page you can also hook up any uh, MIDI devices you might have to act as inputs and that's it for the audio MIDI page and there's a few options I like to select in preferences as well uh, most importantly, uh, down here you have number of undos, and I think by default it's set to something like 20. And I personally like to have it set to 200 or some other arbitrarily large number that I can then build and know that I can undo as many times as I need to in order to get back to whatever state I was originally in. Uh, so I find that to be pretty useful. And then the last thing uh, is there is a directories menu over here that you can use to choose which, uh, where your factory is located, where your user files are located, etc. Um, so it's useful to have these set to proper locations um, to save you time loading and saving files later on. Okay, so now you should be all set up to start building a reactor. There are several buttons on the interface that I still have not covered, but we'll get into those uh, pretty early on in the next few videos here.